Next thing we need to do is we need to set up a static IP if one's not already set up. So I'm going to show you how to set one up. It's a fairly simple process. Um, within, within command prompt, you can type in IP config space slash all. And I can open up a notepad document here. And we want to go up to our Ethernet adapter. Uh, mine's going to be this one right here, actually. So I can just mark. I'm going to copy all this information right here. This will be the important information. Right click to copy it. And basically, we're going to need everything right here. So with this information, we can switch to our control panel. So start control panel, then network and internet, and uh, network and sharing. Switch over to change adapter settings, and locate our primary adapter. And right click on it, go to properties. If you're using Windows XP, it'll just be a um, uh, control panel network connections. You'll see it listed in here. But anyways, once in the there, once you've right clicked and go to properties, you'll scroll down to internet protocol. Um, Windows XP will just be Internet Protocol for uh, Windows 7, Windows Vista. It'll show uh, TCP, IPv6, and IPv4. We're going to go to the IPv4 and go to Properties. And in here, you're going to specify the IP address. Um, so basically, whatever is listed in Command Prompt, you can just copy over. So this IP address can copy into there. Um, subnet can copy there. Default Gateway can copy there. DNS, same, same uh, procedure. And once these are these radio buttons are checked, this information is inputted, just hit OK. And it should apply that change. You should now have a static internal IP set up. And you can hit OK for that and close out of this. Now, now that we have a uh, static IP, we need to forward the uh, 443 port, the one we created earlier. So what I want to do is open up our internet browser. And within here, we need to uh, go to our router's um, configuration page. A lot of people may not know how to forward a port, so I'm going to show you a really easy method. Um, there is a website called portforward.com. You can go there and you can locate your uh, router model. You'll see most people have like a Linksys or something. So you can just find your, your router there, select a version, and from here you can skip advertisement. And you'll just find a program. It doesn't really matter which one. You just want to see the basic procedure. Um, Shiva VPN yeah, let's go to Shiva VPN. Um, within here, you can just basically follow the steps. So ask for your IP address. That's the static IP we just set up. So you can just input that information. And it'll tell you exactly what you need to do. Just follow the steps here. And uh, once you get to the part where you actually forward the port, we're going to replace the port specified by them with the uh, port I gave you. So this is going to be like, for instance, this would be 443. And I'm going to show you how I do it on mine just to make it easier. So my router would be 192.168.0.1 in the internet browser. You can log in here, switch over to advanced, go to virtual servers, and I already have mine set up, but basically I'd name this something like uh, SSH, IP address, I'd put my IP address, which is 192.168.0.114, and I'll do the drop down. And protocol is going to be TCP, port is going to be 443, 443 and basically save that's all I have to do save settings and what that'll do is anything connected to port port for three is going to be forwarded um, so we can we're able to connect so I can go ahead and close out of that and we can proceed with the next step now the uh, next step we need to do is uh, we're pretty much done on the this system our primary system this is going to basically be our SSH server so what we can do at this point is we need to gather our external IP address. Most ISPs won't give you your uh, external IP address automatically, so we need to go to whatismyip.com, and I'll show you your external IP address, what your IP address looks like for others outside your network. So I want to make sure we copy that down for reference. And at this point, what we want to do is we want to download a program called Putty. And this is not going to be used on this computer. This is actually going to be used on... Uh, uh, the remote system, but I'm just going to go ahead and show you how to do it. So we can search for PuTTY. It'll be the very first one. We can just go to download. And all we need is the PuTTY.exe. So we can go ahead and download that. I already have mine downloaded. I have all the files here. Anyways, once it's uh, downloaded, we can just right click and select new and select text document. Now make sure you also have the show hide of file extensions on. Um, if you don't know how to do that, just go to the folder options view and uh, just make sure it's unchecked but anyways we can go ahead and rename this document to whatever you'd like I'm just gonna name it ssh.bat to create uh, make it a batch file yes and we can go ahead and edit this document so right click edit 
And within here, we're going to type in the command putty space hyphen D space 8080 for the uh, HTTP port. Space hyphen P. And we're going to specify that secure port 443 space hyphen S S H space and then our external IP address which we noted down earlier and that's all we need to do is just X and save and so once that's saved we should be able to just double click on it you know bring up a putty interface here on command line we can log in this will be the user account we uh, created earlier if you already have one just entering your user account on the machine so mine's gonna be Satan I think this is capitalized actually password and now we see that we're in the um, directory of the system. So I, sh I should be able to just do uh, see all my, yeah, see, I can see all my uh, install directories on program files. I can navigate around as though I'm on a system. So what I've essentially done is, even though I'm at the computer right now, I've created a tunnel to my home network. So let me show you this example done on a remote system. I've remoted into my roommate's laptop right here. Um, I'm connected to my neighbor's wireless network, which I cracked earlier, uh, just for this tutorial too. So I can... Uh, Go ahead and I already have the putty downloaded and I have the batch file here. Actually first one I want to show you is if I open up Internet Explorer, I can type in what is my IP.com. And we'll see here it shows my IP address of that other network. So what I do here is I log into the computer, my home system, and I am I'm in my directory now. I'm in my local system through this remote system. So I need to configure my Internet Explorer to rec or basically trick it to think I'm on the SSH uh, network, even though I'm not. So what I do is I can go to Internet Options within Internet Explorer, switch over to the Connections tab, select LAN Settings, and here we want to make sure we check the option to use a proxy server. Now your work may already be configured for proxy server but you can usually just clear it out and go with this step anyways while still remaining on a network. So for this, we, we want to check that and select Advanced, and we want to go to the SOX pro, uh, proxy address and type in 127.0.0.1 .0 .0 port 8080. Hit OK, and hit OK. Now once we've done that, we should be able to just refresh, and we'll see now that it shows my IP address to my home network. So this is my roommate's laptop right now. I'm on a totally separate computer that's on a totally separate network, but it's tunneled to my home network on my home system, and it's giving the IP address of that network. So it, it basically recognizes that I'm on a totally separate network, even though I'm still on the same network. Um, I'm just tunneling through to my network. And at this point, I should be able to access, if, I, if like my, I, my space was blocked, Facebook, I should be able to access them no problem. Any kind of application or web application that's compatible with SOC servers, which most are, should be able to work. Now, there is one exception that I've actually encountered personally. Um, a lot of Flash games will still face issues because a lot uh, Flash, the default Flash settings aren't really compatible with the proxy settings. They don't reflect them. Um, some sites are programmed to allow it. Other sites are not. Um, so one workaround for this I found is to download a client. I'll go and switch systems here. It's to download a client called ProxyCap. Basically, what ProxyCap does is it launches Internet Explorer almost in like an encapsulated session. It, it, it tricks Internet Explorer to think its native settings are that of the proxy settings. So when you configure proxy settings within Internet Explorer, it launches on your native network connection. Then it implements those proxy settings you specified within Internet Explorer. What ProxyCap does is it, let me go and open up here, it launches applications like Internet Explorer, Instant Messaging Services, so forth. It launches them as though you're the na your native network settings are that of a proxy. So if I go to proxy, I can create a new one. I can specify that 127.0.0.1, port 8080, hit OK. Rules, I can add and say all programs. I'm going to specify my browser and hit OK. And actually, actually specify the uh, proxy first, hit OK. And I should be able to launch any Internet Explorer and so forth through that proxy. And I'll be able to access any Flash-based game as well. And that's how you create an SSH tunnel. So hope you all enjoyed. Uh, have a great day. Mushroom Hatbangers. Subscribe or... Uh, uh, well, die.